Um, I kind of talked about this a little bit before. Um, finding your character. Uh, there's a website called Creative Crash. You can definitely go there, but it's a horrible website when you're trying to search for stuff. So if you just for, look for Maya, Maya character rigs, um, high in 3D, they used to be Creative Crash and they changed their name. These are all the different rigs that are available. <clears throat> you obviously want to find one that's free. Uh, we also want to find one that's a biped and something that we could easily work with. Um, for the remainder of the projects for this class, we'll be using these same rigs, so we want to find something that we'll be happy using for all the, all the remaining assignments. Um, stuff to consider, um, this character has very short legs. His walk cycle is going to be very different than someone who has very long legs. Okay. Um, same thing with, you know, something like this. You could definitely work with, let's say, this one, but do you really want to, like, work with that? underwear guy the entire time. Maybe you do. Um, some of these things, like this girl has a weapon. I've never used this one before, but she has a weapon that might come with it. That might just be an extra thing. All right. So you're going to go through, you're going to find a character rig that you want to work with. Um, the best one that I like to use is the Andy rig. So if I just search in here for Andy, there's the Andy rig. There it is, and I could download it. You'll have to log in, download it, and then you'll get a zip file. I'll show that one, but I'll download a more recent one, um, just so we can see that girl with the sword, or Jerry. Let me see Jerry here. That's 2014. Let's see. I think she said 2018. No, nope, 2014. All right, so I'm going to download Jerry, and we'll see how good Jerry is. Oops. Download, open. All right, so with this specific rig, it comes zipped up. So I get this Jerry file. I'm just going to uh, extract it into my D drive, P drive, winter 2540 folder. Now, I don't know what Jerry comes with. We will find out. Uh, I'm going to set my project to Jerry, wherever he went. <clears throat> and then I'm going to open up Jerry and node save. Usually they'll come with textures. Some do, some don't. Some are all just colored inside of Maya. Um, before we do any posing, which is our actual assignment, we have to do some setup uh, to get it going. Uh, before we even get into that part, we have to make sure that this is a rig we want to work with. Um, every rig that you get, you have to go through the controls and just see how to move things around. Um, one student one year had one that was completely in Spanish, so it was very hard to find exactly what the controls were that they were trying to access. Um, based on your rigging, you should be able to have a good foundation of how to grab stuff, how to move stuff, rotate it, whatever. Um, most rigs are rigged very similar. This guy has circles by his elbows, his wrist, and his shoulder. Most likely, these are going to be forward kinematics, meaning that I would just rotate each one of these in order to get them to move. So if I go to rotate his shoulder, there's his arm moving or rotating like that. Here's this one, and then here is his hand. And then to get all of his fingers to move, it appears to be a yellow circle. Uh, around here, and there's several different controls. Here's index curl, and there's ring curl, and you'll see it's very similar to the setup that we had. Um, his standard pose looks like it's 10. Oops, that was sorry. His curled pose is 10. His uh, backwards is negative 2. So instead of going from 10 to negative 10, he went from 10 to negative 2. There's his thumb curl. Here's some spread. Here's a cupping. Um, and then he also has individual rotators on the fingers, so I could grab those and individually rotate those too. Those are really good because if I had the character grabbing a gun or something, your hand isn't in a specific position. Your finger may be curled in a certain way, so you want to have those controls. Uh, what else? Let's see. He has a circle right here, so let's see if we uh, move it. Yep, we can definitely move this. Obviously not very realistic, but we can move it. And we can rotate it. Now, one thing I'm noticing about Jerry is that he's pretty slow. 
um, as I'm rotating this, he's actually has a little bit of a delay between as I drag and as he's moving. So that might be a deterrent for me to use Jerry. Same thing here. Um, they're really good at locking things down. So translates and rotates are here. Um, but this guy appears to have not done that. Oh, look at you can do that too. I don't know why I'd want to do that. Like, I guess I can scale it too. So that might be something that I actually want. Like maybe I have a character I want to have big hands. Right. Or Miss Fantastic, or Miss uh, Incredible, right? Or the uh, Nameless Marvel, the Nameless Marvel. Right. <laughs> Marvel. Um, here's his hips. He has two hip controllers, so this one moves his whole body. And then this other circle one just move or rotates his hips. So it doesn't like move his entire body up and down, left and right. So sometimes you want those double controls. He's got these ones here. Same thing, like I can move these for whatever reason. I can rotate it. Not really a good reason to do that. Probably the same thing here, yes. Uh, by his feet, he has more like the um, IK controls that we set up on the arms and the legs. So now I can move this just like I would. And there's also controls over here for swiveling his knee, um, bending his toe, rolling on the ball of his foot, the roll angle, which is a different one. I've never seen that before. Um, he does have a stretchy one. So if I pull this out like this, stretchy is at zero. As I click this and drag, you'll see that his foot actually stretches to that point. Uh, again, something you might want uh, for yours, um, not really anything I need for this. Um, Anti-pop, so watch his knee here as it comes down. You'll see his knee kind of like pops backwards. I'm assuming that this would correct that. Um, doesn't seem like it's done anything though, so I don't know what that does. Uh, length one, obviously nothing I need there, and length two, nothing I need there. And then volume, so I guess maybe we can control the volume of his leg. So as we push this up, maybe. Nope. I'd have to look more into what that volume one does. I've never seen that one before. Uh, he also has facial controls, which are all over the place. Uh, this one here um, allows me to, it looks like, kind of squish his head a little bit. Uh, this one here translates, rotates, and scales. That's for his ear. <laughs> This one's kind of neat too, because it looks like you can pretty much customize what he looks like and still have the rig there. So if I wanted him to have obviously enormous ears, I can make him have enormous ears. And then rotate him, and then rotate it. That could be a fun rig. Um, here's his eyes. So again, we have the positional <laughs> and scaling, and then rotation. Now this is obviously rotating the geometry, it's not rotating his actual eye I'm sure, there it is, he has eye aims right here for us to aim where he's looking. And then even on here, I have an individual control on each side to control them individually if I wanted to. So if I want him to go cross-eyed, I can grab these and cross them, and now he's cross-eyed. Let's see. Uh, very, look at that, and he has controls for each one. So there's his lip, there's his other one. There's this, there's that. Mm. Yeah, looks like we can rotate it. There's also some controls over here. Uh, these are grayed out, so that might just be used for controlling something else. Here's teeth slide, I'm just moving that. All right, so lots of controls. We're not gonna do a whole lot of uh, facial animation, if any, really. Um, just some basic things, like if we need him to blink or we need him to have like a shocked expression, maybe. Um, on his arms here, let's go back to his arms for a second. There's a plus sign right there. Um, it says FK, IK, blend. So right now it's FK, I rotate the arm. I'm gonna switch this to 10. And now you'll see the circles go away and I have a box where I could then uh, switch this to an IK. And it's typically, you know, a good thing to have on your rig. Uh, some rigs don't have that. Obviously, this one does. 
He also has these controls on the side here where I can move some basic mouth movements there, some mouth movements here. And you'll see a lot of the time it's just a matter of going in and exploring it. And that's the only way you're going to see what they do. Some of these are obviously really extreme. I would never need to do that, I don't think. Uh, and some of these are a bit more subtle. <laughs> a lunatic. Some eyebrows, yep. There you go. Hello. <laughs> and that's probably for his hair. Yep. And what's this for? Oh, that's his whole head. Look at that. You can squish his head. That's cool. And then that's rotating that. All right. Cool. So it looks like he has pretty good controls. Um, he has a circle at the bottom. This is his main controller. Something I want to see is if I can move him, if I can scale him down to a tiny little man, and he still works. It seems like all his controls followed him. It seems like everything is still functional. Um, something important to have, sometimes you may want a different size character. And the fact that all these still work at him at this super tiny size uh, are great because that I can still use him for super tiny or super big or whatever I need to. Uh, I'm going to reopen him because I screwed him up. And I'm going to pretend that I'm going to use Jerry. I have a video on the other ones I'll put up too. Um, so let's go, and I'm just going to throw in an Arnold uh, Sky Dome, and I'm just going to hit Arnold Render, and we'll see what Jerry looks like. Nothing. He has no textures on him at all. He's just very shiny and reflective. <clears throat> if I go to uh, hit 6, yep, still nothing there. Did he have something on here? He did. He had colors and everything. So let's go to the Hyper Shade, which is that sphere, and let's see why we don't have any textures for him. Typically, when someone works in Maya, um, they're building their stuff in one Maya version with one renderer set up. We're using a different renderer. So in here, I don't know why my Materials tab is missing. Uh, tabs, tab, Utilities, Render, da, 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 Shading Groups. Materials, there they are. I don't know why they were so far over there. Um, I'm going to click on one of these and then hit this um, double arrow. So this is how each one of these materials are set up. And if they have it set up, they're using basic Maya materials, which is why Jerry doesn't have any materials showing up. Okay, Arnold does not render Maya materials um, very nicely, which is why we get that. Um, it looks like he has some files attached. So if I click on this file, he has this uh, file called Jerry Pants. This other file is called Jerry Sweater. Jerry head and hands and eyeballs. Okay, so those are linked in here somewhere. Um, I need to remake every single one of these so that Jerry will function inside of my real world. So I'm going to um, click on this, and if I notice it's just color, it's just brown with some specularity changes. I'm going to go to select objects with material. And what that does is it selects any objects in my scene that have that material. Then I'm going to go and assign a new material, which will be my Arnold standard surface. And there it is. And I will call this Jerry Hair. I will give it a brown color. And I can pick any color I want, but I'm just going to go with what they had here, brown. There we go. Um, I'll adjust some of the roughness on this and pull that down maybe, and that should be good. Okay, so now I've replaced their fake hair with my new hair. I'll right click on the next material, select objects with material. <clears throat> uh, this is probably his pupil. It doesn't show anything, but it looks like what it is. So I'll again go back to new material, go back to shader, go back to standard surface, and say, it just says as black. So let's call it as black AI. And it looks like it's just solid black. So I'll just get solid black and no specularity on it at all. This might be a controller uh, setting that we have here. I don't see anything showing up there. Fit eye sphere shape. 
Well, we'll see what happens when we go to the next one. So we'll go to blue, select objects. And I don't see anything selecting. There it is down there. Yeah. So I think these are probably just like just controllers. I'm going to skip these as blue, as green, as red stuff. And just go down here to blend 11. Let's see what that gives us. All right. So there's his... Know what that is a belt so you must have a belt on just underneath the stuff so new material again here standard surface belt yellow i'll give it an orange color and i'll go to the next one select objects there's his belt And this part is very repetitive. Um, belt. It's just a matter of going through and just grabbing those pieces and assigning the materials to it. I can come back and adjust all those afterwards. Um, I definitely don't want him to be as shiny as he currently is. Uh, pant, belt, loops. For some reason, they haven't been purple. Sure, I guess it'll look purple. I'll just pull the roughness up on that one. Um, if I'm not sure where I'm at, I don't know which ones I've done, which ones I haven't. If I just go here to edit, delete, unused, they all go away if I've already used it. Okay. Uh, so now we can go to eyes, select objects. There we go. That's his pupils. At least part of them. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to click on his eyes here and then click the double arrows. <clears throat> and this one you'll see has a file that's connected to it. Okay. The other ones I was pretty sure they didn't have files connected to it, but this one does. So I'm going to assign my material. Oops, let me right click again and say select objects. I'm going to assign my standard surface. I will call this eyes. And this is using file number... Uh, no file, just says eyes, just eyes. If I go to textures, whoop, where is it? There it is, file six, that's what it's using. Um, so I'm going to go back to my eyes material. I'm going to drag file six with the middle mouse button onto my color. I'm going to try to. There it is. And then I'm just going to verify that that file is loading. Uh, images, nope. Textures, and eyeball. There we go. And so now it has the Maya logo, so that it should be loading. If I hit 6, now I can start to see some of Jerry is coming back into uh, frame here. And then I'll just keep going and grabbing all my other ones. So that's good. Uh, back to materials. I just did eyes. Um, let's do this blend lens. So select objects. This is his um, transparent surface around his eyes. So this I'm just going to go to my transmission, make that transparent, and that should be good. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Trans eyes. All right. Now. Uh, but just to look at this and see what it's going to look like, uh, his eyes should be black when we do this. It's calculating, converting, blah, blah, blah. There we go. So his eyes are completely black uh, in this frame um, because in Maya, whenever you make something transparent, you also have to go to the objects and actually tell them to be transparent. So if I go here, here's his eye, here's his other eye, here's his lens, here's his other lens. I'm going to grab one at a time, go to Arnold, and say opaque off. And now when I render this, <clears throat> his eyes pop back in. Okay. Now we're starting to get some of the other materials showing up. Um, we still don't want these to be blends because that is uh, bad materials. They don't look good in our final render. So I'm going to go select objects. This is his hand. I believe this one also has a file attached to it. So I'll go to my standard surface. I'll go to my util uh, textures, 
One of these is hands. Uh, maybe it was that one. Points. Five. Okay. I'll rename this hands and middle drag five onto color. And then for all of these, I'm going to take the roughness really far up. He doesn't really need any roughness on him. Uh, that's just going to look weird. Drag this materials down to the other side or not. All right, I'll leave it there. Uh, Jerry hair. I did that already. Pant belt loop I did. Here's pant blin. So select objects. AI standard surface. And again, just repetitive stuff you just have to do. Uh, pants. And I believe this is, again, another material or another texture. So I can go through, click on it. This says Jerry hands. This is Jerry head. Two is his sweater. So one process of elimination must be his pants. Yes, it is. So I just middle drag that onto my regular color. Take the roughness up again. Okay, so I do that same process for every single one of these materials uh, until I am completely done with all the materials. Everyone uh, inside here is no longer a blend, they're all standard surfaces. In this case, these as blue, as red, whatever's, I'll leave those. But everything else um, should be that AI standard surface. And then I should also go into them. Um, and just make sure that the roughness is at an appropriate uh, level so that it doesn't get too um, shiny. So this is not done yet. His shirt is obviously not done. His face is not done. Uh, but his skin or his hands are done. And his pants are done. Okay. So that gets us uh, one step closer. So um, that's good. The next thing I need to do is I need to create what are called character sets. Um, the way that we animated the other stuff, we went and grabbed the feet, the hands, the legs, all that other stuff and tried to move it around, scale it, whatever, manually. Uh, what we want to do is have an easier way to control all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to create character sets that are going to allow us to easily set keyframes on different parts of the body and create loops. So down here at the bottom, it says character sets. Right now on this character, there's none. Um, the Andy rig does come with some. They'll show up in the outliner. You just go find them and delete them if you use Andy or whichever one. I'm going to go to my rigging menu or my animation menu, go to key and create a character set. And this is going to be whatever you want to call the character. Jerry is the name of this one. I have nothing selected. I hit create. And so now I have a Jerry character set. There's a little dude right here, Jerry. And now I'm going to create sub-character sets, one for the upper body, one for the lower body, and then one for the head. Uh, create sub-character sets, upper body, um, all keyable except that, sure, uh, maybe not. Make sure I have nothing selected. There we go. Uh, lower body, same settings, and then head. So now inside here, I have Jerry, upper body, lower body, and head. So now I'm going to take basically a, a clustering of what I would use to control the lower body and put it into the lower body. What I would use to control the upper body, put it in the upper body. And the same thing for head. I can add stuff later, but that's the gist of what we need to do. So for the lower body, I know that I'm going to be using these two. I know I'll be using the knees probably. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to use these controllers. These are kind of like overkill for me. I don't think I need any of those. Um, I will be using the main hip controller, this big circular one here. Okay. So the arrows here, um, these two controls here, and these two controls there. And maybe I don't even need those because I think that has swivel. Yeah, which is controlling those anyway. So I don't even need that. I'll just grab everything here and there. Okay. So I'm going to switch to my lower body, grab these two pieces, highlight all the stuff that I think I would use, translates, rotates, swivel, toe, roll, roll angle, stretchy, I wouldn't use stretchy, uh, anti-pop, maybe not, 
All right, that should be enough. Um, I'm going to go to key. I'm going to say add to character set. So now over here, my lower body now has uh, all of those controls locked into it. Then I'm going to grab the hips, grab the translates and rotates, center between feet. That seems like a good one. Um, and then also add to character set there. Okay, so now that's the lower body. All the stuff I would use to create the walk cycle for the butt for the feet to move is inside there. Then I switch to upper body and do the same thing. Um, I'm going to use uh, FK. So I'm going to grab that, this, and this. Grab the rotates, and let me grab that on both sides. All right, so those are inside there. Um, on the hands, let's see, curls. I'm going to stick with a very generic, just these controls here. I don't think I need all the other ones. Okay, if I'm doing something more advanced, yes, but I'm not going to be doing anything more advanced with this character. Uh, back to key, back to add to character set. Um, I also want the hips here, the circle. That should be on there, so I'm adding that. Um, this hip or rotator here, um, let's see, I don't think I'd change the position, but I would rotate it. And the same thing with this one. And let's see, this one, whoa. <laughs> uh, that would be part of the head, yes. All right, what about this? This is shoulder blades, I would want that. I don't think I need the position of it. Nope, wouldn't use that. This control is for these, don't need that. Okay, so that'd be all the stuff for upper body for uh, Jerry here. Then I would switch to head, and for head I only really need what I would use to, let's say, make him blink, make him rotate his head. So like this one, I would add that to the head. And where he's looking, I'll add that. Oops, and that would be position. And then he's blinking. Let me see. Is that that's the size of it? I don't need that. Wouldn't use that. No. Uh, there's Jerry's weakness. He really doesn't have a good way to make him blink. That's his eyebrow control, yes. So it wants me to do that for a blink. Insane. Um, I guess so. Yes. Yeah, that's his mouth. That's that. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm not going to add a blink. I'll figure out the blink afterwards. But I'd add that to head also. Okay. So once I have all my materials set up on Jerry, he's good. Once I have all my character sets set up on Jerry, he's good. Um, and now I would go through and I would save the scene as Sarcona underscore Jerry ready to uh, pose. Um, notice up here, Jerry is an MA file. If I were to save this as a Maya binary file, not an ASCII file, it will probably give me an error. Or not. Today's not. Uh, sometimes it doesn't like to change the name. So if it's an ASCII, typically you want to leave it as an ASCII file. And if it's a binary, then typically you would leave it as a binary file. Uh, now just so you can see what this is going to look like. Uh, fall, 2540. Character rig scenes. Andy ready to pose. Yes, yes, yes. So there's the Andy rig 
uh, all of the controls are here. So here's the character sets for Andy. Here's head, here's lower body, here's upper body. <clears throat> if I switch to my hypershade, here's all the different materials that went into making Andy um, look the way that Andy looks. Okay, so I've converted all of them from M or from uh, blends to um, Arnold shaders. Um, I've also added a uh, environment in here just so I have some basic lighting so that when I do render stuff I can see it. Uh, Andy is currently naked because we don't have our project set. Uh, D drive fall character rig set. Oops. Well, set creates default, I guess. There we go. And then this is one of the cool things about Andy is that it comes with these ability to change different features, which obviously that guy had manually you could do, but this one you could change like, uh, here's Andy's hair. So I can make Andy's hair look like that or look like this or look like that. Uh, Andy does have a good blink control here because I can grab this feature and push that down and this feature and push that up and then I can make Andy blink. Um, I can also grab the circle at the bottom and change the level of smoothness from proxy, so Andy moves very quickly, um, to super smooth, and Andy will look really smooth, but move very slow. This is me moving Andy in a circle. So that guy didn't have that control. It would have been nice if he did, because uh, then we could control how fast we're able to interact with him. Uh, but you'll see a lot of the same controls, just different spots. Here's the main hip controller for Andy. So I can move Andy's hips around and legs. Um, here's this other individual hip one. So I can rotate just the Andy's hips. Here's those knee constraints. Here are the foot constraints. Same idea, they're just in a different spot and they're called different things. Okay. Uh, Andy also has those circles on her arm. So I can grab this and rotate these individually. Or I can grab this arrow and change this to an FK or an IK and then move that and then control where this is moving. And then Andy has several controls on her uh, body as well for rotating her spine, moving her spine. It doesn't matter what rig you pick as long as you're able to control it and do what you need to do. We'll be doing poses with this, we'll be doing a walk cycle. We'll be doing an animation, so you want to make sure that you can do all of those things with your rig. Um, if you're not sure, Jerry will work, it looks like, and it also looks like um, Andy will work, because we've used Andy before. You might find some other ones in here that are um, okay to use. Um, like someone used him before, but it's very difficult to do a walk cycle just because of how short his legs are especially compared to the upper body, if I'm trying to get him to do any kind of animation, um, his proportions are, are troublesome. Uh, I've used this creature before. Oh, they changed this. They must have re-uploaded it because this is a really old one. Mm, yeah, created 2007. I used him in like probably 2009 is the last time I used this one. But that's a fun one to use too. I don't know anything about this one. Yeah, that one could be a cool one to use too. Okay. Um, so this is the first step before you do any animation, any posing, anything else, you have to get this file set up. Every file that we do from this point on uh, will be based off of this setup here. So when we do like, let's say our poses, we're going to open up this ready to pose one Yes. We'll ignore all those error messages that pop up. We'll save this as um, Andy pose number one. And then we'll start posing it right from here. Okay. We're, I'll have a separate video where I go through posing. Um, 
but that's the process. You can't skip that first one because then you don't get this character set, you don't get the material set up. Some people will go through and they'll do all three poses and then have to go back to each one and reassign all those materials and remake all of their character sets. So don't do that, do it the correct way. All right, so once you get done with your uh, animation, you can get into um, this part of setting up the character and getting it ready to be animated or ready to be posed. <clears throat> and then after that, then we'll get into the actual posing of it, um, which is typically, it's a lot of fun. Um, you'll just need to find images as well. So if you wanted to grab uh, character poses, uh, images, you can go out there and start looking for images that you want to pose your character to. You want to find something that's dynamic and something that is an actual photograph. You don't want to find a, uh, a drawing of it because that's not good reference. Because this person could have drew these things really exaggerated, we want to start with good reference. So something like this um, is a pose from a character that looks like that could work. I would download that image and I would save it and I would use that pose for what I want. Um, this is another good one. You can see where her leg is positioned. You can see where her body being twisted, where her shoulders are. Uh, this one is an okay one. You really can't see what her feet are doing, but you can make that work. This is a good one too. Let's see a few more. Here's a guy with a sword. Uh, don't find boring poses. This is a boring pose. That's just her standing there taking a picture. Uh, that's another boring pose, someone just sitting there. Uh, if you need reference for stuff that your idea is to look up, if you look up dancing, sir. I think if you could uh, scroll down for a second. Or, um, the, um, the one in the, with the blue background, he said in front of the mirror, that, that lady does a lot of great, really good reference on her, uh, on her DeviantArt page. She does, yeah. She has a lot of good stuff that we've used that for other classes too. Oh, really? Yep. So yeah, so you can find them on DeviantArt. Um, we're using it as reference, so you can just use Google to find those. Uh, if you look up dance poses, typically you'll find some really good dynamic poses inside here. Um, something like that orc character, wherever he went. Let's just say this guy here, because he's very similar. There's no way that this guy would be able to get into this pose. It's impossible. His legs are not that long. It would not look the same way. Right. So we just have to be aware of that when we go to pose our character that we're not recreating this exact pose, we're making our character look like they're doing the pose as best they can, okay? So dance poses are really good because they're very dynamic, they're very um, expressive. Um, same thing with martial arts, if you look up martial arts poses, stuff like that, stuff like this. Um, these ones are okay, but they're kind of like holding back the dynamic of it. If you find one of someone like actually kicking, that's like a cool pose to use. All right. So once you get your character, you get them set up, then you can actually like start looking for some images that you'll use. Um, our end product will have three different poses um, that we're going to be copying or, or using. Uh, so you want to find three different references. That is a weird pose. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> All right. 